Shalom, Yasharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechai Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Akim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity and shalom to the Akwath that are listening in today. Back at you with another lesson entitled To Israelite Man is the Prize in which you know it's currently early in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. It's early in the morning right now. It's uh <clears throat> six thirty four this Tuesday, twenty second of November. So I've got to talk quite quietly, you know. But back to what I was saying. The Israelite man is the prize, contrary to popular belief. You know, we've been trodden down for far too long, man. We've been looked at as three-fifths of a man. You know, servants, slaves, wetbacks, niggers, you know, savages, you know, poor. Okay, we've been... Uh, discriminated for way too long and what the Lord is coming back to do he's coming back to set that righteous order okay how it was originally intended to be but obviously by way of our transgression you know we didn't hearken unto the law statutes and commandments of the Lord we decided to do our own thing which is what's brought us down in this position that we're in right now okay but the Lord is about to do a whole 360 and put the Israelite man back at the top. Okay? So you know, all this worshipping the Edomites and glorifying the Israelite woman, that, that's going to come to an end, man. The true glory is the Israelite man. Of course, beginning with our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai. Okay? So, Lord willing, this lesson be edifying, man. We're going to go straight into the precepts. We're going to start over here. In Psalms 119, verse 124, and it reads, Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. And those who are sincere in this ministry, that's what we're earnestly asking for. For the Lord to deal with us according to his mercy and to teach him his way. All right, because we have come to the realization that the ways of Babylon does not work. It's a very flawed system we have in this uh, Babylon the Great, which is democratic influence, has spread throughout the four corners of the earth, right? Verse 125, I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Okay, so we pray for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge and understanding to rest upon us. You know, and if the Lord deems you worthy, so to speak, then he will do. Read Isaiah 11, I believe around verse 2 or 3. Okay. Verse 126, <clears throat> it is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. You know, so we're saying to the Lord, it is time for you to work. Show them the greatness of your power. Show them why your name is to be feared. Okay, Because the reason why society is in a state of perpetual unbalance is because they don't fear Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because it says in Proverbs 1 and 7 that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools and, and um, but fools despise um, um, <clears throat> knowledge. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay? Verse 127. <clears throat> Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. Yeah, above fine gold. Because the scripture says the commandments, they ain't grievous. You know, but through envy of the devil <laughs> and deceit and deceit, 
you know, it seems like the most hardest thing ever. When really and truly, if we lived according to the law, statutes and commandments, which there's 613, right? If we lived according to the Lord's way, then um, we wouldn't, this, this world wouldn't be in a state of turmoil as it is. Right now it's past the point of, of, of you know, it's past the point of no return and the Lord's just going to have to destroy this place. Okay. Verse one twenty eight. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. And that's us. We hate every false way. You know those who are truly sincere about this ministry, and you know wholeheartedly believe in this truth. You know we don't believe in that glorified woman. You know that simp spirit glorify the, the, the other nations we don't we don't believe in that shit man we believe in improper order which we're going to get into in a few scriptures but let's go to the book of isaiah <clears throat> it's isaiah 32 and uh you know we'll start at verse 9 and it reads rise up ye women that are at ease hear my voice you careless daughters Give ear unto my speech. Because you see, Eve, she don't want to fucking listen, man. She thinks she has it all together. She thinks she don't need a man. She thinks she's a strong, independent black bitch, right? Eve Eve don't want to repent. She don't want to submit to her man, okay? But when that time of Jacob's trouble comes, she'll be the first one hooting and hollering, looking for a man. Oh, how quick people are going to change when that judgment comes. <laughs> You, you, you're going to see it. In the twinkling of an eye, you would have thought it was First Corinthians 15. <laughs> Verse 10. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. So that old way, you know, you, you don't need a man, you don't need shit, you're all good on your own, hot girl summer, all of that nonsense. Right, that 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 is gonna fail, man. That way is not gonna prosper because that is against the 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 true order set in the Bible, okay. And true order is coming to this earth very soon. Verse eleven: Tremble, ye women that are at ease; be troubled, you careless ones; strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins and. You know, in the ancient world, that's how you'd pretty much mourn. All right, and this world is get, is is coming into a place of of severe mourning, man, because of the judgment, the hell that the heavenly Father is going to bestow upon this place. Okay, but let's jump up to verse two. <clears throat> and a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, which is a violent storm, as rivers of water in a dry place. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, in a weary land. right? So a man, a, an Israelite man of the elect, he's going to be your salvation. The woman gets her salvation through the Israelite man, and the Lord is going to bestow the Israelite man with power unheard of, unseen of, in order to defend himself and 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 whoever he's protecting as well against our enemies. All right. Isaiah 59 and 19 says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Okay, this is this is what we wholeheartedly believe in. Remember, it is impossible to please him without faith. Hebrews 11 and 6, right? Let's go to Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Because you see, the Israelite man is going to be in such a glorified state. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. He's going to have power unseen of, unheard of, to defend himself against his enemies. The women are going to want to get in line in that day. You know, they're going to realize they ain't no strong, independent woman. You know, they can do this all on their own. They're going to realize they need a man. And most importantly, they need a man of the Lord. Okay? So you, you look, you Israelite men that are struggling with women right now, whatever the case may be, you wait and see 
how quick and drastic the tables are going to turn, man. You're going to have more women coming on to you than you can even deal with. You're going to have the pick of the litter in that day. Okay? So, you know, be, suffer patiently. As the scripture says, suffer patiently. Okay? Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 3. And it reads, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of the Hamashiach is the Most High, Yahweh. And that is the righteous order. And that is the order we are getting ready to come back into. Okay? The woman will be under subjection to the man. Okay? And that is the righteous way to do things. You see? And to be honest, the times that we're heading into, these women ain't going to have no choice but to submit to their man because they're going to know and understand that the only way they're going to be safe is through their man. Okay? So you see, the Israelite man is the prize. Like, we are not three-fifths of a man like how we've been told for so long, you know, just servants, slaves, all right? Just workers, just laborers, and or, or just, just performers, all right? There's more to, to us than, than, you know, those things that they say against us, okay? Let's go to the book of Zechariah. Chapter 12 and 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. Now we know David was a mighty warrior, man. He was a mighty warrior and he had spiritual power. Okay. King David was a, was a you know, he was able to run for a troop, okay, and perform many great mighty acts, all right? And we're going to be bestowed with that same power in these last days, you see? We're going to be bestowed with that same power, right? It says, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David, which is the elect, shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Okay? And that's Yahweh Shai. And we're going to be, look, John 14 and 12, Yahweh Shai says, Greater acts than he shall we do. First John 3 and 2 says, Although we, doesn't, we don't know what we shall be, we know that when he shall appear, when Yahweh Shai shall appear, we shall be just like him. Isaiah 47 says how he's not coming to meet thee as a man. So you can only imagine the sort of power the Israelite man of the elect is getting ready to be bestowed with on this side, man. And you best believe that those women will submit to you in, in that day, man. You best believe that you're going to get that respect that you, that you deserve in that day. All right? Because there's going to be no debate and you've got the power. You know, you're going to be doing things unheard of. Miracles, all right, um, superhuman strength, going to be able to run, hide, disappear, uh, um, you know, shoot laser beams out your eye, uh, uh, just many different things, man. Way past your imagination. You just wait and see what the Lord is going to make out of you, man. All right, which makes me want to go to um, Jeremiah 51, which, you know, I always quote it, but I don't actually bring it out. But we're going to bring it out today. It's so Jeremiah 51. And uh, let's start at verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. We are not like these other nations, man. For he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also 
will I break in pieces, man and woman? Okay? You see, you women ain't exempt. You women are going to hold the smoke too. Those of you who don't want to repent, right? And with thee will I break in pieces, old and young. Doesn't matter you, how many grey hairs you got. No matter how young you are. You, if, look, if you are not of the elect, you are going to be executed. Point blank, period. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. The maid is the young, is the, the you know, the young girl. Okay? So, hey, look. <laughs> the Lord, he ain't playing, man. Okay? The Lord ain't playing. He's about to bestow his men, his elect men, with that spiritual power. Power unheard of. Power unseen. You can look at Black Adam. You can look at Black Panther. Where the power that the Lord is going to bestow us with is going to far surpass um, all these superhero movies that you see, man. You just wait what the Lord is going to make out of the Israelite man. All right? Let's go to Isaiah 13, verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. And not just any man. The Israelite man, beginning with the elect. The Lord said, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. All right, so hey, <laughs> the Lord is getting ready to raise up his elect men, man. Okay. And the, the, you, you will be respected in that day. When that time comes, there ain't going to be no debate in who's got the power because it's going to be blatant. All right. Let's close out here. In Isaiah 66. And verse 5. And it reads. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. Alright. And, and, and that's us. We hear this word. And we tremble. That's why we do the things that we do. To the best of our ability. That pleases the Lord. Right. So that Lord willing. We could be a part of that salvation. Okay. So hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. So the Lord is going to appear to our joy. Lord willing, we're a part of that hopeful elect, right? And they shall be ashamed. All right. So those who didn't want to believe, who didn't want to get in line, who didn't want to call on the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, when the Lord appears, He's going to appear to their shame. Okay? So suffer patiently, Yasharala, because our time is around the corner, man. Romans 13 and 11, for our salvation is nearer than when we believed. All right? So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time, I say Shalom.